to my intro to Unreal Engine 4 tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be going over the user interface of Unreal Engine 4, basically how to get around, um, what some of these buttons do, and how you can kind of use a few things real quick. So, first thing people usually want to know is how do I move around? Um, I guess you can use the arrows. So the D-pad, or not the D-pad, the arrows on your keyboard. Um, you can also use, let's see, you can, if you click and drag, that works. I don't really like it. If you click and drag middle mouse, that'll move you up and down. Um, my favorite way to move around, though, is if you right-click, you can rotate the camera. And then if you press either the arrows or WASD, if you're familiar with PC gaming, you can kind of go up, down, left, right, however you want. Um, and that just seems like a kind of intuitive way for people to play games to fly around. Um, I mean, you can roll, you can zoom like that, but the easiest way is really just hold right click and then WASD. Um, but by all means, try them all, see what works for you. Um, Let's see. There's a few other things you should know. Uh, if you wanted, so if you wanted to move a guy or anything in the world, you can just click it and move it around with the left click this time. Um, up here we have move, rotate, and scale. So if you're familiar with any other 3D package uh, programs, this should be familiar to you. So you can rotate. Um, you can see here that it's kind of snapping to these 10 degree increments. Um, all the snapping is set up here, so there is rotation snapping, and scale snapping, and surface snapping. So if I wanted to turn off, uh, if I wanted to turn off the rotation snapping, now I can rotate it, you know, however I want exactly. But um, that is useful to leave it on for certain things like, uh, let's see if I turn this back on, I like to use 15 degrees sometimes, so you can just make, you know, 45 degree turns, or a full 90, and that way when you're kind of, also you can see it snaps on the grid this way too, um, so if you're building your levels correctly, you should make things on a grid so that you can just snap them together nice and easy. Uh, that's a little more advanced, but at least you know how to snap them and move things around now. Um, another nice little trick is if you press the end key on your keyboard, it'll generally snap them right to the ground. Or it'll do the best it can. Um, let's see, so let's go over some of these windows. Uh, Starting, I guess let's start at the top. Um, if you wanted to create a new level or open some assets or save your project or any of that kind of stuff, it's generally in the file menu. So we can do new level. Um, let's try this one. I haven't seen this one before. Use control. Oh, that's pretty fun. Um, so that's how you add a new level. You can save levels here. You can edit. The stuff you'd want from here is the editor preferences and the project settings. Um, and maybe some plugins. That can also be found up here. Which generally this is kind of the easier tab to work with because they're big buttons. Um, I'll just take a look real quick. If you open up world settings it does pop it up over here. And there's a lot of settings just about how the world works. Um, physics, gravity, stuff like that, what game mode you're using. So um, currently this has no game mode. Oh, it does. But if I wanted to override it and make it um, a different game mode, I could I could attempt that. It isn't quite going to work. But uh, Those are your world settings. Um, you can see there's also a details panel over here next to where the world settings goes. That really just shows the details of whatever you click on is nice. So you can go through all the options of any object or anything you click on. Um, so that's the world settings. Under the project settings, there's a lot of settings you're going to eventually have to go through um, when you start publishing stuff. 
kind of the most important ones I'd start with is looking at the maps and modes so you can tell it which map to start up in and then which map uh, which map the editor should start up in and which map the actual uh, packaged game should start up in. And then if you have a server or a transition map or any of that stuff, you got local multiplayer. I mean, there's tons of stuff about your project in here. I'm not going to go over all of it. Um, I will talk about, I guess, inputs. So this is where you would put like inputs for keyboards or controllers or whatever. You can see right now we have... Um, like a fire input which is linked to the left mouse button but it's also linked to the gamepad right triggers and it's also linked to um, virtual reality stuff so whatever uh, controller you're using it'll all do the same function which is fire which is a nice feature there's also axis mappings which you know either turns you or moves you in a direction um, so if you wanted to add more, you can add more here. That's just for you to know. I don't expect you to be using that yet. Um, moving along, we got save current, but that really just saves this level. So when you create a level, it doesn't save itself. So we'd have to you know, give it a name, save it. It didn't save all the assets though. So if you did want to do that, here's your button. Save all right there. Um, source control, we can get into that later. That's if you want to work with somebody um, or like as a team, you can uh, put your project online and um, you all can contribute it and it'll update the project dynamically and you can download whatever work everybody's done. But um, I have a video on that, which I can link below uh, if you guys need that. Marketplace, we've already talked about. There's a little quick button for that. Um, Mega scans is great. Um, don't think I have it set up for this current version, but I'll get into it in a future uh, video. It's the new system of, of 3D scanned environments that look photo real that you can just incorporate into here right away. Um, blueprints is what we're going to be coding in. So the level blueprint is right here if you just want to have things happen in the level. And then there's blueprint classes for each kind of um, Thing that you have so for example here's what the code would look like for the first person player moving around it's all node based and uh, visual it looks a little crazy right now but once you get started with it, it it's pretty easy to grab onto um, so that's your blueprints tab cinematics we can add level sequences which are you know cutscenes and cinematics and stuff um, the build button you can build uh, so if I move anything, let's see if it if I move stuff around, it usually makes me rebuild my lighting. I guess it doesn't care in this one. But when you're done, you can build your lighting, or you can build your geometry, or build things separately, or just hit build all, and then it'll that'll put all your level together and figure everything out for you. Um, as I've already showed you, you can press play. There's the regular play, which is in the uh, window I have here. You can hit the drop down and play it um, in a standalone game in a new editor window. You can even just simulate it where you're not actually playing it. See, I got a little pop up here. Um, and launch is it's actually launching the, the full game version of it, which you could launch it to a different console. You could launch it to your phone. I usually use that when testing mobile games. Okay, so that's the top bar. We've covered how to move, rotate, and scale, how to snap things together. Um, I didn't cover camera speed, so as we're moving the camera around with the right click, it's only this fast. Maybe it's too fast. Maybe I want to get in closer. I can change that camera speed down, and now I can move nice and slow. Conversely, if you have a huge uh, world you need to traverse across, maybe you want to turn that up a bit. So just be aware that's there. Usually three or four is about normal. Um, moving over here, we have the outliner. Oh, and by the way, this all of these things can be moved and kind of rearranged as needed. Um, although I tend to screw it up sometimes. So say if you like, if you messed it up like this and you don't want to bother, you can always go to Windows, Load Layout, and then Default Editor Layout, and it'll just reset it for you. Um, let's see. So here's the outliner, right? This has everything in the scene. And if you hit the eyeball button, it can hide it. 
if you double click it, it'll zoom you to the thing. And if you just single click it, it'll select whichever thing um, you have selected. And then all the details are here, like we already went over. Um, and we'll keep working around like a clock here. The content browser we already talked about. Um, the next video is going to be mostly based about the content browser and managing all your content. So I'll save that for then. But just be aware this is where all your content is stored. Uh, and then over here is the modes panel. This is where you can put in a lot of commonly used things. Um, you can put in things like a light, uh, you know, and then all the details are over here for the light, like we talked about. You can change the color, whatever you want. Um, cinematics, effects, geometry. I'll get into some of this stuff later too. Um, basics are kind of just if you actually wanted to use the geometry um, as a final uh, asset, I would use the geometry here instead of the basics. And I'll show you why real quick, just since I'm already here. Um, so if I, let's see. The only way I can make this bigger is by scaling it, which destroys the textures, as you can see. Um, that, was a that was a basic, right? Okay, so in geometry, you can save the textures, but change the shape. Uh, so, while we're in the modes panel here, I'll cover some more. Like, when you have time, you can look through all these different classes. Um, we'll cover some of those later, but for now, we'll keep going through these. <laughs> Paint, I'm actually going to save for later too, where we can paint um, directly onto the meshes. It's pretty cool. Landscape, I will also probably save for later, but it does allow you to create a quick landscape and sculpt out mountains and valleys and what have you. Um, we'll, we'll do a whole video on that. But so there, you know, there's a basic landscape. Um, And then the next one over is foliage. So I'll cover this one too in a separate video. You can drag basically a bunch of plant models or whatever kind of models really you want in here and then kind of just paint them around the world um, with whatever settings you want to kind of make it look realistic and it's nice and easy. Um, it's a really cool system. I'll show you guys that later. Um, but before I'm done with this one, I'll show you the geometry editing and why you would probably want to stick with geometry instead of basic. So you can see when I stretch this thing out, um, the texture remains good instead of stretched. So that's the main difference. Uh, they both work. They both have collision. Um, You know, I think they both come with collision. But one, you could, this one, uh, regular geometry, you could actually keep in the scene forever. And there's a lot of other tricks I'll show you later about that too. Um, but that's the gist of the UI, and um, which means user interface and the menus and the windows of Unreal Engine 4. Um, moving on from here, we're going to go into a little more advanced geometry stuff and um, setting up worlds and um, how to use those kind of tools. All right, guys. Thanks, and I'll catch you later.